The debate about coal seam gas exploration in Australia has divided landholders and environmentalists and left the industry to constantly defend its expansion. Earlier this week, a Senate committee rejected a Greens bill to give the federal government more power over water supplies affected by CSG development. Dr Ian Duncan is a research scientist from the University of Austin at Texas and he's been comparing the experience in the US and Australia and he joins us now from Sydney. Good morning. What exactly have you found are the major differences or the major similarities between the United States and Australia? Uh, good morning. Um, one small correction. I'm at the University of Texas at Austin. I think the main um, similarities between uh, what we're looking at in the United States in, in uh, shale gas exploitation and coal seam gas is they use similar technologies, hydraulic fracturing, and they have some of the same infrastructure for transporting gas and compressing it. So we have some of the same issues with the possibility of groundwater contamination and also air emissions and noise pollution. And groundwater contamination is, of course, one of the key concerns from environmentalists and those opposed to coal seam gas exploration in Australia. Is that similar experience in the United States? There are lots of accusations about groundwater contamination related to shower gas. And what my research so far has found is that uh, most of those accusations can't be scientifically substantiated. In fact, that the uh, things that people say are contaminating their groundwater were almost certainly in their water prior to, to uh, the drilling taking place. Now, that's not to say that, that drilling and, and uh, well completion problems can't, in the long term, lead to groundwater contamination, but so far it hasn't been scientifically justified, and most of what you read and hear about it is simply not true. But we've already seen uh, companies, say Santos, uh, making payments, uh, compensation payments, for groundwater contamination as a result of coal seam gas exploration. This has also happened in the United States. There's a number of companies who have made compensation payments, but companies will make compensation for legal reasons. Sometimes it's cheaper to make compensation than go through a lawsuit. Um, and, for example, in Pennsylvania, the law there is such that the onus is on the gas producer to prove that they're innocent. So uh, unless they can prove that they didn't do something, um, they get fined and they have to pay compensation. Another key uh, argument put forward by opponents is this lack of safeguards and of, um, and of regulations for the industry. Is that a similar experience in the United States? There's definitely been accusations about uh, lack of regulation. Um, when you look at the um, the regulatory enforcement, what you find is that the gas industry appears to be improving over time and the number of, of, uh, of incidents where it can be proved that there was some kind of contamination, this is in the gas industry as whole, not just shale gas or coal, bed, or coal seam methane, um, has improved greatly over the last 20 years. But don't you think tougher regulations would at least uh, give the appearance to the community and to those who are concerned about this, that this situation is being, um, is, is being uh, brought under control? Well, first you have, to, you have to think that there is a situation that needs to be controlled. And also, um, sometimes... Tightening up regulations can have unforeseen consequences. We've seen that in the U.S. So I, I think there is always room to improve regulations, and you need to have an ongoing process of process improvement in which the companies, the regulatory agencies, and also the local communities are involved as a, as a team working together to improve regulations. And I, I, I think Australia is headed towards that, but they have a ways to go. Dr. Ian Duncan, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. And Dr. Duncan is a guest in Australia of the US Study Centre at the University of Sydney. And for those interested in this story, there was a fantastic piece last night 
on the ABC's Foreign Correspondent Program by Michael Brissenden in uh, North America looking at the issue and how it's dividing issues, uh, dividing communities right across the United States of America.